Faraz Shaukatali. And a jolly good morning to you. It's a wonderful morning, actually, and this is Newsline. Live, as always, from the News First studios in Dawson Street in Clamble. And joining us this morning is a very um, knowledgeable guest, former Deputy Governor of the Central Bank, uh, an educationist, and he's right here with us on the set, Dr. W.A. Mijewadna. Good morning to you. Good morning to you, Faraz. It's nice to see you. Same to you. Um, you haven't been on Newsline as much as we'd like to see you, but you're kept busy by some of our other programs as well. well. Well, of course, I mean, I am a busy person right now, Farad, because I have to write, I have to do teaching and so forth. And you also have to lobby and try and keep the focus on these, well, on these very important financial no, matters. No, Farad, what I am doing is I am just keeping the members of the public informed. Yes. It's not lobbying no. uh, because there is no any other person who would be able to write oath, with authenticity and with, with some authority. authority and therefore uh, I am keeping on writing and as a result the uh, public has come to know. Indeed. Uh, we, we are very, uh, the people are um, very grateful to a, a great many people and uh, you are very much up there on that list of people yeah. because thank you for educating the public. Yeah, it's, you know. a, it's a pleasure to hear that. <laughs> no, absolutely. It's a, we must say it the way it is at the, at the right time. And, of course, today um, is uh, another very legendary event because um, we honour, and it's a happy birthday to you, sir, is Lester James Pierce. A legend is 98 today. So happy birthday from everybody on our network, and uh, we hope you have a wonderful day. Uh, that's it. So happy birthday to Dr. Lester James Pierce, that absolute legend of man. Um, contributed so much to our collective enjoyment in the country. And um, also, of course, yesterday there was the uh, launch of, uh, of a book, Radio Wickram, a singer. A political biography. But, in all fairness, um, the Prime Minister's uh, governance of uh, the central bank bond matter would make, it a, make him a political oddity. Why do you think there is uh, this intense disregard of what went on at the central bank? Why is it, Ms. Dr. Vijay Wadner, we've had Witness after witness after witness coming and telling us and there's one one thing that is like a common factor and that is that procedure and established procedure and norms apparently has been ignored. No, recent for us now uh, this had been speculated by many of us uh, throughout this uh, bond scam yeah. which started on 27th of February 2015 but what is happening right now for us is that witnesses are coming out with truth now before the uh, Presidential Commission. Because they don't the have their boss standing next uh, to them looking One over. reason is that. The second reason is that they are free to, I mean, they are protected from whatever they are saying. So as a result, they have no any fear yeah. of expressing the truth. So the truth is now being revealed at the Presidential Commission of Inquiry for us and must some of the information that is coming from the those witnesses is actually alarming. Alarming in the sense, uh, in my view, yeah. uh, it's uh, an opening of a can of worms yeah. within the central bank yeah. and the monetary board and the senior management of the central bank as well as the government yeah. which is in charge of the central bank will have to take a very serious note of what has actually happened during the two-year period, which I could call the dark age of the Central Bank of Sri Lanka. How very aptly described. It is indeed, it has been the very dark ages of the Central Bank. And what you say is uh, very interesting because, you know, uh, the former president, Chandrika Kumaratunga, once told us that... Um, that there was a real fear psychosis. She was referring to the stewardship of the former president, Raj Paksa. And you now talk about a fear that these people are now talking without fear. So it means that 
during these last two years, there has been a real fierce psychosis. Yeah, said. exactly. I mean, you would have seen, you no, know, even the deputy governors had not been free to speak during the particular period. Yeah. And the evidence that they present to the presidential commission, Faras, uh, has been completely uh, opposite of what they had been maintaining in public as well as before most of these uh, official committees like the court. Mm. So what it means is that given the present uh, management style within the Central Bank of Sri Lanka, uh, all these officials have, are now free to speak and when they speak freely uh, for us we get lots of new information yes. leading to the uh, particular scandal yeah. uh, which actually is horrendous. Well, it appears that way. In the island newspaper today uh, is one of the lead stories. Perpetual treasuries bought bonds with central bank money, according to a CB central bank official who happened to be the additional director of information technology at the central bank, Wasanta Alvis. Amongst uh, what he said was that perpetual treasuries had received 36.4 billion rupees from the Employees Provident Fund and the Central Bank. That's an awful lot of money. Yeah, but of course, the, I think this particular information reported by the island has to be corrected for us. Yeah. It is not from the Employees Provident Fund, it is from the Central Bank of Sri Lanka. From the Central Bank? Central Bank. Because right. what has been borrowed from the employees provident fund is less than that, about six billion. Right. Uh, what is happening here is, for us, it's an abuse of the facilities given at the Central Bank of Sri Lanka. This is that intraday intraday liquidity, which is not meant for primary dealers. Right. Because what the intraday liquidity facility has been introduced in the Central Bank. Yeah. To facilitate commercial banks to complete their payments. Because right. uh, because now if I want to make a payment from my bank to another bank for us, yeah. I may have money in my account, yeah. but the uh, my bank may not have enough money to pay the other particular commercial bank. Right. So since the when if that happens, uh, if there's a disruption to the payment system, central bank has a facility called intraday uh, liquidity facility, where the particular bank in short can borrow from the central bank for the during actually for the day for the and day. they have to borrow in the morning and they have to settle that money in the afternoon right and that money is not available for doing business so what has happened it's in this particular case for us is according to the evidence that has been presented before the commission yeah the particular primary dealer who is not actually authorized to borrow for that kind of purpose has yeah. borrowed from the central bank he had used that money to bid at the primary auctions of treasury bonds yeah. and used that money to buy those treasury bonds and then immediately he had sold those bonds to other institutions. And so in other it. words, he had done business out of the monies belonging to the central bank of Sri Lanka, not Int out of his own money. Interest free? Uh, that of course, I, it, it's not clear because you know it's not interest free. To my knowledge, they have to borrow at 7.5% right. uh, the standing uh, lending facility yeah. of the Central Bank of Sri Lanka because it's a borrowing from the Central Bank. Right. It's not interest free. Uh, yeah. That particular information may not be correct. Right. So there's this, we must be careful that the information that may be not accurately yeah. Yeah. reported yeah. as yeah. well. Yeah. Well, um, but it is. It's almost astonishing. It's astonishing. I mean, you are doing business now. Of course, far as you may recall, in the first bond scam of 27th February 2015, the particular primary dealer in question bought all those bonds out of the monies belonging to the bank of Ceylon. Right. He didn't have money. Yeah. All subsequent bond purchases he had done, according to the evidence now surfacing at the uh, presidential commission, yeah. Out of the monies he had borrowed from the Central Bank of Sri Lanka. So the first bond was done with the monies given uh, advance by the Bank, Bank of Ceylon. Ceylon. And the, all subsequent ones he had done out of the monies he had borrowed from the Central Bank of Sri Lanka. So there is nothing um, spectacular about these people doing this business. No, I mean that's not something which has to happen for us because Central Bank is not supposed to lend money to a particular individual 
primary deal or any particular individual in the economy yeah. to do business with the government of Sri Lanka. I mean, that would have been stopped then and there by the Monetary Board of the Central Bank so of Sri Lanka. How, how did it, this, this particular company get away with it? That's, we don't know. That's the, the commission will have to now come up with, you know, particular reasoning for about this because uh, what I find well, is that it's, it's completely it's, out of order. It's out of order and it's against the principles of, the cent of central banking. The central bank is not supposed to lend <coughs> a private party to lend back to the government of Sri Lanka. And uh, therefore it is totally against the uh, established rules and regulations and the statutory provisions of the Central Bank of Sri Lanka. What, what's the monetary board been doing? That is the reason for us now we have to actually hold the monetary board responsible for all these things that had happened. It, is, it in the appears that that monetary board, with all due respect where it is due, um, appear to have gone to sleep. They have gone to sleep. And Mr. Mahindran they, was they, the only one awake exactly. and, and he's done what he wants. Yeah, in fact what has happened is that the Monetary Board had been actually a conniving party to uh, all these things that had happened in the central bank by being silent. It's like what you say about what we say about democracy that the people who don't, who are, who are silent actually sometimes can be doing more damage by being silent. Yeah, but th this is worse than that for us because the Monetary Board members are expected to exercise their obligations, rights and duties independently of anyone else in the system because that is why the Monetary Board has been created by law in, in, in Sri Lanka. So they have violated the, uh, the legal responsibilities now. We'll come right back and discuss these um, violation of legal responsibilities uh, by the former chiefs at the uh, Central Bank of Sri Lanka after this short break. Don't go away. This is Newsline. News First, Newsline with Far Faraz Shaukutali. Welcome back to Newsline, live as always from the News First studios in Colombo. Dr. Vijay Wadner, completely out of order, borrowing from the central bank, lending it back to the central bank, uh, to back to the government, and making just under 13 billion rupees. It sounds like child's play. Was it a child at work? Uh, no, it's not a child's play for us. It's uh, carefully... Uh orchestrated. Uh, Would you agree that it was premeditated? It's a premeditated one because you know according to information now in uh, which had been there in the financial market for us yeah. what had actually happened is there had been a pumping and dumping exercise done by the uh, uh, market players. Yeah. What they do normally do is whenever a particular big bond issue is to take place hmm, yeah. They start uh, pushing down the price of the particular bond in the market. Right. And the employees provident fund which is expected to bid at the primary auction yeah. have been has been prevented from bidding at the primary auction. You say prevented. Who, who, who would have prevented? We don't know because we have to yet to see the uh, evidence that might uh, surface at the commission. Right. Uh, and um, what happened was even at the COP uh, inquiry, the second COP inquiry, this was revealed and they had not bid. And they had failed to bid and this was uh, highlighted by the uh, examination report, on-site examination report done by the central bank officials which yeah. was leaked to the uh, uh, press uh, some time back. Yeah. And um, then they buy the bond at the rock bottom price. Right. For example, uh, in the case of the uh, bond issue on 29th of March 2016 for us, yeah. uh, a uh, a 15 year bond yeah. uh, had been purchased by the at the primary auction at around 78 rupees whereas the face value of the bond was around uh, 100 rupees then immediately after that the bond prices have gone up right so bond prices were dipped down by a careful uh, machination yeah and then the bond prices had gone up and at that particular high price the bonds had been uh, you know dump on the employees provided fund. So this is what the uh, particular report that had uh, been presented to the Monetary Board yeah. uh, about two weeks ago 
uh, where a summary had been leaked to the press yeah. uh, had alleged that uh, there had been a massive loss of 9.5 billion rupees that's right we, we caused to the employees provident fund as a result of this particular bond transaction so what it means is far as the Bo- employees provident fund which is being managed by the monetary board of the central bank of sri lanka yeah. has been used by some outside parties to make profits and the monetary board is responsible for that <laughs> This is absolutely astonishing. It's it's like one of these um, Jeffrey Archer novels. Exactly. Uh, you know, it's full of intrigue. Yeah. And uh, obviously, somebody who knows a thing or two has been on the um, has sent us a message. It says this, and I think we need to answer this. We need to pose it to you. Borrowed the money from the Bank of Ceylon, the first bond. Yeah. Without board approval. which means that the chairman of the bank salon is also uh, guilty of uh, uh, at least according to our viewer about on two counts loaning money without approval of the board and the three member committee appointed by prime minister one of them was attached to chairman ronald's chambers this gets worse by the second because it's clear conflict of interest you're appointing somebody who works in your chambers to investigate your role yeah but i don't know whether that particular information yeah, we is don't know true. if it's true information is true for us but actually what happened was because uh, uh, according to the evidence that was presented to this particular three member committee yeah the chief dealer of bank of ceylon very clearly said he didn't have the approval of his high authorities to bid on behalf of the perpetual treasuries right amount into 13 billion sri lanka rupees for us he, he didn't not, have. he didn't have he said so he, he did not he didn't have authority from the higher ups in the bank of ceylon right Then so that it take? was a decision taken by himself on his own so what would have happened is that since Charming. since he has violated the lending procedures of the bank of ceylon because the lending procedures of the bank of ceylon is there's a a uh, credit committee appointed by the board and yeah. that committee has to approve of any large lending yeah. because for us remember this is 13 billion rupees it's not it's not chicken feed yeah i mean it it it's he had actually gambled with the money belonging to the depositors of bank of ceylon by bidding on behalf of the perpetual treasuries right and he would have been taken to the task immediately after that but i don't know whether what is happening what, what you know disciplinary what? action has been taken against this particular employee this is because uh, when when um, he was questioned by this three member committee and the, it's reported in the three member committee report uh, he had said that because he was asked the question why did you bid that 12.5% for perpetual treasuries yeah when you had bid on your own money at 9.5% about a half an hour ago correct his answer was that he asked this question from the uh, ceo of perpetual treasuries and ceo had said in singhala aavat ate tamai that means if we are successful we are making big money right so that was that had been reported by the three member uh, lawyers committee and uh, i he thought that the government would have taken immediate action on the basis of that particular report at that time your thinking is the same as the most logical liberal thinker anywhere on the road today but not that thinking was not at the higher levels of this country exactly so sad no i so mean sad. it's so sad because you know had they taken action at that particular time for us we could have prevented the subsequent bond scandals which had been in multiple terms compared to the first bond scam from taking place in the financial system because that is why this particular loss to epf amounted to 9.5 billion which is a significantly large amount of money and uh, that has to be actually investigated fully by a public authority and it itself merits uh, being investigated uh because of the money belonging to the uh, workers of the so the basically what's happened is the, the, the people have been robbed and the beneficiaries of that robbery are not just one but several maybe 
that the, 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 the chances are that it's more than one. Okay. Yeah, but one, maybe we, we don't know because it, know, it's actually a network for us because yeah, so it's this a network. It was a network, money. and uh, they had been operating like a network, and that particular it's network. Tax free, right? This money. Uh, because the uh, in the case of the um, uh, the uh, treasury bonds and treasury bills, yeah. uh, you pay a ten percent withholding tax in advance, and that's the final tax payment, and you right. don't have to pay any more anything more. So. What would a primary dealer's tax liability be? Uh, it's free. So there's Actually, no tax liability? No tax liability on the profits. This is wonderful. It's you borrow the money from the bank. You borrow money from the central bank Which of Sri Lanka. Which you are Lanka. not entitled to borrow. You are not entitled. And I mean, you are not supposed to abuse that power for us. You can borrow. I mean, you can borrow from the central bank of Sri Lanka if there is a chronic shortage of liquidity. Yeah. But not to do business. Yeah. And um, you borrow it because what has happened is you know you have to look at the series of events that had taken place prior to that. Yeah. The Central Bank of Sri Lanka reduced interest rates from eight percent to seven point five percent. Yeah. When the market interest rates were around eleven percent for us. So what it means is that the Central Bank had given an opportunity for a particular market player to borrow at. Low rates from the Central Bank of Sri Lanka uh-huh. and lend to the government at around 12.0 to 13 percent, which we call arbitrage, yeah. which should not have happened. So the government of Sri Lanka has got money not from the members of the public, from themselves, from the Central Bank of Sri Lanka by printing that money. So that is what has been revealed in this particular evidence given before the Commission. In fact, that had been highlighted by the uh, uh, Central Bank examiners who had examined. The perpetual treasury transactions during the particular period, yeah. in terms in accordance with the leaked on-site examination report. So that had been highlighted earlier, but uh, now the firm evidence has been presented to the commission uh, with regard to the uh, actual happening of the. Uh, is this thing. is this what this commission is doing, and and what the officers of the central bank have been doing? Is it what you would call? Uh, in your parlance, a forensic investigation. Uh, yeah, I mean the forensic investigation was done by a separate committee appointed by the Monetary Board, Farah, because uh, according to the uh, was that pre Mahendran or post Mahendran? Post Mahendran, post Mahendran. Right. Because the uh, we have to give credit to the new governor as well as the Monetary Board functioning under the new governor when the. Uh, Uh, report on perpetual treasuries was presented to monetary board the board immediately took action to appoint a special committee to investigate into the uh, uh, losses of the employees provident fund on account of these transactions mm-hmm. and that particular report had been presented to according to the news reports to monetary board about 2 weeks ago yeah. a summary of the report was leaked to the uh, members of the public also by somebody we don't know who has done that according to the summary of the report the uh, total losses to employees provident fund for us had been around as i said earlier 9.5 billion sri lanka rupees absolutely astonishing so sad Our control room wants another break, so don't go away. This is, after all, Newsline. News first, Newsline with Faraz Shaukatali. Faraz Shaukatali. Welcome back to Newsline. We have Dr. W. A. Vijay Wardner, former Deputy Governor of the Central Bank, with us this morning. Dr. Vijay Wardner, all this is making us very depressing. depressed now then logically with man with your experience and privy now to all what has been going on what chances of recovering any money from the perpetrators of these crimes uh it all depends on the final outcome of the commission of inquiry report for us yeah and they the commission finds that there has been an irregularity which we don't know yet yeah. the law enforcement authorities will have to take legal action against all those people who are involved and if there is any loss to the employees provident fund that can be recovered immediately because the in terms of the epf act for us the monies owed by to the owed to the employees provident fund is a money owed to the crown 
go to the government. Yeah, it's right. just like, you know, abusing this government property by somebody. Oh, yes. So Abuse it can be state. recovered and you can send even the directors to jail and recover it from their private property. Wonderful. I, yeah, so that's the law. So it has the law. The law has to take, now legal action has to be taken. The legal action has to be taken by uh, various parties involved in that. Yeah. And then uh, there's a chance of recovering this money from uh, the people who have earned that money illegally. Of course, far as the investigation into the affairs of the EPF has to be backdated. Even uh, prior to 2015, there had been some irregular investments done by EPA. For example, this Canville uh, holdings. holdings. Yes. Five billion has been invested by EPF. The EPF members have not got anything. But the, the Canville Holdings is owned by Sri Lankan insurance. Yeah, I mean, it, it is nothing. I mean, it's, it's totally uh, uh, an investment which has not remunerated the EPF members at all. Right. Then another 500 million they have invested in the Sri Lankan Airlines, which, which of course had been purchased by the government of Sri Lanka recently. For many years, the EPF didn't <coughs> earn any money. So this has to be investigated totally because of the uh, because of the it, it's a failure on the part of the monetary board to uh, f f perform their duties in terms of the trust ordinance as trustees. That's interesting point because um, breach of trust is viewed rather dimly by the legal system, isn't it? Uh, it actually it's a serious offence. It's a serious offence. So it's a serious offence and offense. there are yeah. hopefully serious uh, penalties. Serious penalties. Of course, the trustees will have to be responsible because the, in, in, the uh, trust in terms of law as well as an economics for us is an institution where the trust managers would protect the monies belonging to the trust beneficiaries as if they are protecting their own money. So right. in this case, the monetary board has failed to perform that duty. Would you, would you, if I were to say to you, does the governor of the central bank, does he have a duty that is covered by the, by this trust act? It is actually because the employees provident fund, the monetary board is actually the trustee. Right of the uh, monies belonging to the members of the provident fund. So the governor led by the monetary board of the Central Bank of Sri Lanka is responsible for this. Ooh, it looks like they've been fast asleep. But this board will have now wake up from that sleep for us because otherwise what would happen is there are, there's a chance of some outside party uh, taking the board to courts now because there was uh, uh, an article written by uh, uh, by 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 somebody from the le le legal fraternity yeah. uh, writing in an anonymous name called Eagle Legal Eye. Yeah. He had said that uh, the uh, the Minister of Justice yeah. or trade unions can take the monetary board to courts in terms of trust ordinance oh, for see. breach of trust. For breach of trust. Yeah. And we've always pointed out right from the beginning of this very, very sad state of affairs that this is all about a conflict of interest. And uh, it is uh, a political oddity that uh, Arjuna Mahendran uh, has been uh, protected and offered uh, this sort of uh, official patronage because after he, he was uh, refused the contract in his own right by President Sivisena. Uh, he continued to be seen uh, in the news, uh, attending various uh, official sort of meetings and so on. Um, and so in that respect, um, having a presidential system is like having a check and a balance. Because exactly, exactly. In this case, far as uh, the President Maitripali Srisena should be given credit for taking two bold decisions. One is not to reappoint the former governor as the governor when his term expired. Yes. Second one is to appoint a special uh, commission of inquiry right. into the bond dealings during the last two year period where we now get lots of new information about the uh, irregularities that has taken place within the Central Bank of Sri Lanka.
The Prime Minister said his next step, uh, or the plan now, uh, at the big match, uh, was to try and remain in power. He's going to have to try very hard because he needs to address this most pressing problem. Yeah, but of course the government cannot keep silent once the commission report is out for us because the government will have to take action against all the culprits. Probably they have to take responsibility for what has happened and uh, the, uh, the nation has a right to uh, ask the government to do that. Wonderful. Dr. W. A. J. Warner, thank you very much for having been on Newsline. We appreciate your presence and we uh, appreciate your efforts to educate uh, the public at large as to what has been happening at the Central Bank. On that note, take care. Thank you for watching and we'll see you same time, same place tomorrow morning. Have a great day. God bless.